My name is Tracy Baird. I'm the president and CEO of Engender Health. We're an organization that for 75 years has been working around the world to improve access to high quality family planning and other reproductive and sexual health and rights work. Um, we are currently in about a dozen countries, including in India and in the United States, working to advance our mission collaboratively with our partners and our host governments. So what is the role of Engender Health in Karnataka, particularly in Karnataka? Sure. Yeah. In Karnataka, we've been working just this past year on the first phase of a project to improve the quality of and expand access to family planning methods. We're working with the state government and with for, in 14 districts right now to train um, trainers and have those trainers train the doctors and nurses that are providing modern contraception. And here that especially includes the use of the injectable contraceptive, which is relatively new to the public sector, and it includes the use of the IUD, especially for women who have either delivered a baby or had an abortion, because that's an especially vulnerable time for women, um, and a time when women need access to long-acting and high, highly effective contraception. So we've been working here in these 14 districts, not just in the health facilities, but all the way down in the community by working with ASHAs, A&Ms, and Anwagardi workers to ensure that women understand the options available to them and have good access to the high quality family planning services that the facilities are offering. It is 1.9. What's important about that is that we're increasingly making it possible for women and men, for couples, to decide when they have their children and how many children they have. It's also really important that couples can space their children and not have them too close together. That helps the woman's health, that helps the children be healthy, and that helps the family and community's health. One of the great successes here in Karnataka over the past few years has been reducing the maternal mortality rate by almost 50% down to 70, which is remarkable progress. And we're really hopeful and committed to supporting the government and the healthcare system to continue to reduce that rate so fewer women die from pregnancy-related causes. So as, as, um, as much progress has been made in reducing maternal mortality and in reducing the fertility rate, what we need to recognize in Karnataka, as in other states in India, is that there are enormous disparities by region within the state. So in the northern part of the state, for example, and in Bangalore and in urban slums, there are much um, greater problems, both in terms of fertility levels, in terms of mor mortality and morbidity from pregnancy-related causes, and in terms of access to choice in contraceptive methods. So our project is working now in 14 districts to ensure that those districts where uh, women have had the least access and the, the greatest health burden can catch up with the rest of the state and join in the progress that's been made here in Karnataka. Yeah. Um, well, in India, like in any place, women want to be able to make choices about their bodies and their health and their families. Um, I think in India, um, again, as in, in elsewhere, um, and in, in Karnataka, women don't always get to make those choices by themselves. They're um, making choices with their husbands, they're making choices with their broader family or mothers-in-law um, in terms of what services they can access and when they can reach out to the healthcare system. But the progress that's been made, again, has been remarkable. The government here in Karnataka is highly committed both to health and to education, and that's what we want to help accelerate to continue that progress for women and to reduce the disparities so women across the state all have access to the same life-saving and health-promoting care. It is an honor, an honor to meet both the Honorable Chief Minister and the Honorable Minister of Health. Um, the Honorable Chief Minister is clearly very committed to health and education and to advancing the health indicators for the state of Karnataka. Um, it seemed like he took some, some pleasure and appreciation in the progress that's been made and still feels an urgency to do more. So we're very grateful for his support of this project. The health minister as well um, is committed to ensuring that, um, that women and the population at large have access to 
all of the best modern care available and can ensure that we're reducing those disparities. I understand that he actually himself comes from a district with some greater health problems and, and worse health outcomes. And I think that may fuel his commitment. It certainly fuels ours to ensure that women and girls throughout the state um, have access to high quality reproductive and sexual health services. Asking that, we are currently actually in five states. We're working on um, on substantive family planning projects in four, and on an adolescent and youth uh, sexual reproductive health project in Bihar, part of the uh, the country's RKSK initiative. Um, we have been in other states in the past, and we hope to be in other states in the future. We look for opportunities to partner with donors, such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that is generally generously supporting our project here in Karnataka, and to partner with state governments um, and other organizations to ensure that we are bringing great value to the collaboration. So we are eager to continue the work in Karnataka, to expand it beyond the 14 districts that we're in now, and to deepen that work, as well as to expand elsewhere in the country. Well, uh, it's interesting because, in fact, in gender health has been known in our field, in the reproductive health field globally, as being one of the leaders in working with men as partners and men as engaged in family planning. And men have multiple roles in family planning. Men can be users of family planning, for example, with no scalpel vasectomy, which is not very common in India, but is provided and is a very safe and effective permanent method for a couple. Men can be active by supporting their wives, uh, supporting their other family members, and ensuring they have access to family planning. And men who are in positions to use their voice for advocacy, and whether they're in politics or in medicine or in banking, can ensure that men are also speaking out about the needs of the country for reproductive and sexual health. We are also interested, and we do work um, in other countries where gender health works and other topics including HIV AIDS, um, sexually transmitted infections, and in all of our areas we want to ensure that, that men are engaged and, and part of the work. We certainly include young men in our adolescent health programs as well, um, and it's not our intention to exclude anybody, but to recognize that the burden of pregnancy is on women and girls, and so we have to put all of our um, at everyone's attention on that and how we can most effectively address it. Um, well, <coughs> in what we've shared from this project, what we're recommending is the ongoing engagement of the healthcare facilities and the community health workers because the power is really in connecting women and girls and families to the health services. So that engagement is very important. We met today with um, the community health workers who are so passionate about the work that they do in ensuring that the families that are in their communities have the information they need to make choices, to decide when to have children, how far to space their children, when to stop having children, and they make that very personal connection between the couple and the healthcare facility. And I think we want to um, just underscore how important that work is, that we can't only provide reproductive health services in facilities and expect to increase access. We want high quality in facilities and then great access and linkages to communities to ensure that we have a, a full environment, a whole ecosystem in which sexual reproductive health and rights are respected and advanced.